joining me now is Matt Connolly. He covers all things Clemson Tigers for On3 Sports. Matt, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. What was your initial reaction when you found out Coach Lee got fired? Yeah, I wasn't really surprised. Um, you know, once Clemson didn't make the NCAA tournament, I was kind of expecting the change. It's just a program that is a very proud program, has a lot of history. Um, you know, it has made the NCAA tournament every year, but one from 1987 to 2019. So, you know, those are the expectations at Clemson to get into the NCAA tournament and to win. And when you don't make it, you know, twice in, in back-to-back years, um, it's not a surprise at all that a change came. So I was kind of expecting that to happen uh, once the bracket was revealed Monday and, and uh, you know, Clemson wasn't in it. And so, yeah, just wasn't really surprised at all when, when the news came out Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, I got you, Matt. Yeah, you mentioned Monty and Clemson as a whole. They missed the tournament back-to-back seasons. And But if you look at the start of Monty's like tenure at Clemson, they made they made four straight trips to the tournament from 2016 to 2019. Well, and during that time, they had a pretty successful record. But you look at their record of the last two years, I think they were 60 and 50. And like you said, that's just not going to get it done. What would you equate that to? Was it just do you equate that to bad coaching or is it lack of talent, lack of resources? What 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 would you surmise is the reason for that lack of success over the last two years? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think early on there was some thought that maybe Monty was putting too much pressure on players and, and kind of guys were were getting nervous and getting a little tense, and that's why they weren't able to make it out of a regional into a super regional or maybe even a college world series. Um, and I know you know, you mentioned that they made the NCAA tournament four times, but they didn't make it to any of the Super Regionals, and they lost at home a few times as well. So, you know, I think that that, that was part of it, um, at least early on. And then, you know, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. Um, you know, both seasons going into last season um, and, and this season, you know, after Clemson, I remember in 2019, they lost to Ole Miss, um, and, and they talked about needing to have better starting pitching and um, you know, more consistent starting pitching, and, and they were going to make some changes as far as how to go about in the offseason program. In the last two years, you know, we heard about changes going into the offseason program and, and needing to do some different things, and they just didn't they didn't work. I think Monty tried several different things, none of them seemed to work. And you know, I think the big issue this year was starting pitching. Uh, they just they had Mac Anglin Friday night, who was consistently given solid starts, but outside of that, they really struggled on the weekend. And you know, it's hard to win in the ACC if you don't have really good starting pitching, and, and they didn't have it this year. Yeah, gotcha, man. And now something that could – I mean, it's already becoming a trouble part of this offseason for the Tigers is the transfer portal. We saw on Wednesday Jonathan French and then Dylan Brewer entered the portal. How much of a threat do you see that becoming for the Tigers as this coaching search continues? Yeah, it's definitely something um, – you know, to keep monitoring for sure. I mean, those guys, they started close to 40 games this year, didn't have great years, um, to, to be quite honest, but they're still talented players who, you know, you probably don't want to lose. Um, you know, I think Graham Neff, the, the Clemson AD, you know, one point he made when he spoke with the team is just wait and see who the coach is. You know, y'all came to, to Clemson, yes, to play for Monty Lee, but you also came here because you like the facilities, you like the campus. You like the area. So, you know, he, he's kind of encouraging the players on the roster to wait, see who the coach is, see what they think of him, kind of see what the fit is and, and not just, um, you know, all kind of jump into the portal immediately. And so, you know, yeah, a couple of players jumped in uh, Wednesday, but it hasn't been a max exodus or anything like that by any means yet. And we'll, we'll kind of continue to monitor that over the next few days um, and, and even a couple of weeks until a new coach is hired. Who are some coaches who could get a look from Clemson as this search continues? Yeah, I think Link Jarrett out of uh, Notre Dame is a name to follow for sure. He's done a really good job um, up in Notre Dame, a place that doesn't have as good of facilities as Clemson. Obviously, there's more talent here in, in Southeast, in, in South Carolina and Georgia in this area than there is um, up in that area to try to recruit to. You know, He's made back-to-back NCAA tournaments, hosted a regional last year. Uh, so Notre Dame is a, a really good program right now that's on the rise. I think he's a name to watch. Um, Scott Jackson is over at Liberty. I think he's a, you know, a candidate to, to know. Um, you know, he's a kind of a young up and coming coach, but he's really done a nice job um, at Liberty. Eric Bakich out of Michigan is another guy I think to kind of keep an eye on. So 
those are a few names I think just over the next few weeks that I think you'll you'll hear and that Clemson will continue to track. One thing that's interesting, you know, a lot of these coaches that they're they're wanting to talk to are currently in the NCAA tournament. So that's a balance is, you know, those coaches are focused on their teams right now. And at the same time, Clemson's trying to get a coaching search done as soon as possible. So just something to kind of monitor here over the next couple of weeks as the NCAA tournament gets going this weekend. Gotcha, man. And another name that I heard today, but I seriously, seriously doubt there's any real fire to it, is possibly going after Chad Holbrook, who, you know, obviously Gamecock fans know very well. He coached here for a little bit. Is there any real interest on Clemson's end, do you think, in, the, in Chad Holbrook? He's had some success at College of Charleston, but obviously that's a different level than ACC ball. I would be surprised. I think that I think that they want a more – Maybe a guy that's kind of led teams to the College World Series or hosted regionals and that kind of stuff um, at the college level. Whereas, you know, Chad did some of that at South Carolina, um, but not not as much at Charleston. And you know, hasn't reached the uh, the College World Series yet as a head coach. So I would be surprised if he ends up being the choice. Um, but certainly, I think he's a a very good coach and had a great year this year at Charleston. Yeah, Matt, for sure. All right, Matt, we're wrapping up here. So my last question for you, Monty Lee, look at his record. He was 242 and 146 at Clemson, 136 at Clemson. I'm sorry, gave him 10 extra losses. But uh, he had a pretty good record at Clemson. Do you see him possibly garnering interest from other teams? And what do you see the future having in store for him? Yeah, I think that uh, he'll definitely get more opportunities. You know, he was a very good coach at Charleston as well before he went to Clemson and took them to a super regional, uh, was consistently making NCAA tournaments down there. I think that, you know, he may take the Chad Holbrook route and go to a, a smaller school, a mid-major school that has some baseball history and, and can go and, uh, you know, do some good things there. He mentioned today um, during an interview that he would consider, you know, the professional ranks, maybe as a scout or as an assistant in the professional ranks. He said he wouldn't mind being an assistant college coach. So, you know, I think he'll definitely have several opportunities and it'll just kind of depend on if he gets the right fit and gets the opportunity uh, at the right place. But there's certainly going to be a pe lot of people interested in hiring him, whether it's as, you know, a head coach and maybe a mid-major as a power five assistant coach or even even possibly in the professional ranks. So he won't be out of a job for long, I don't think.